great skin is not simply a matter of DNA, but your daily habits in fact have a big role on what you see in the mirror. On today's episode of Prime TV's Amso Dotor, with me Larissa Vaz, we have with us dermatologist and cosmetologist Dr. Preeti Savadekar to shed light on the awareness about skin problems. Hello doctor, giving you a warm welcome to our show. We are Hi, glad Larissa. that you are here today. Thank you so much Larissa, nice to meet you. So doctor, as a dermatologist, what are the most common cases that you see? So, uh, me being a doctor from Bombay, when I've come to Goa, I feel so much at home because all the problems that happen in Bombay are the similar ones here because the weather, the temperature, the people, we are quite similar. The food is also similar. So, it's wonderful to be here. And the most common things I see is, of course, acne on the face. A lot of teenagers with a lot of pimples, a lot of hair fall because I think it's the humidity which causes the pores to open up. Also, uh, on the skin, we have eczemas, uh, sun allergies because we have a lot of sun exposure and the people with psoriasis, people come with vitiligo, the white patch or the leukoderma disease that we have and uh, it affects a lot of people mentally, you know, they get conscious. So, uh, I've seen a lot of cases of that. I also saw a lot of uh, fungal infections because the humidity again, the same temperature, the w sweating that we get around, uh, the wetness that we have from the sea. So, it causes a lot of fungal infections. Mm -hmm. And now after the pandemic, there's uh, whenever there's a change of weather, uh, especially the summer season, the humidity, rainy season, we see a lot of viral infections. So chicken pox, herpes, uh, you know, you have a lot of measles, all these things are also increasing now. So I see a range of infections and it's uh, quite uh, common to see all these things here. So doctor, are there any misconceptions about dermatology? So we as dermatologists, you know, we treat the largest uh, body organ, which is the skin, which starts from the head to the toes and the skin gives out the nails, the skin gives out the hair. So we as dermatologists can treat hair issues, we can treat nail issues, but uh, the misconception is people think that they should go to a trichologist or a hair specialist, they should go to a nail specialist for their nails, but actually a dermatologist can take care of all these things. We know how to grow the hair, we know how to take care of your nails, but of course, uh, the salon procedures are different. Mm -hmm. However, when you have uh, problems in the nail, fungal infections, nail growth, uh, linear lines on the nails, hair fall, uh, dandruff and other issues in the scalp, uh, boils and folliculitis, this is what we can take care of. So this is one misconception that uh, the dermatologist can take care of all your skin problems, hair and nails too. So doctor, how do you stay up to date, you know, on the medical advances in your field? So besides attending national conferences which happen all across the country uh, where li different doctors come from different states and we share our knowledge whatever we are expertise uh, whatever our expertise is we want to sh you know uh, give our uh, clinical trials with so many patients I've tried this machine that machine this tablet this medication so we attend these conferences to get knowledge from different uh, of our colleagues different doctors at the same time I also attend a lot of the European Academy of dermatology conferences which happen in Europe and uh, every month every year I go to Europe however for uh, the American Academy I try to go every two to three years because America is too far but uh, we gain a lot of knowledge of different the latest technologies what is available uh, because it always comes out the first in America and in Europe and then we as India you know get it later however uh, once you know about it and sometimes uh, I was also called like you know uh, the late, latest like the most stylish doctor who knows everything about all the different uh, uh, countries in the world so uh, it's good to travel and to gain knowledge from different uh, different places but you also have to read you have to be on you know online to understand from zoom con conferences uh, youtube you have to understand what's trending what's happening what's the latest what people are following and that helps me to keep uh, abreast of all the latest uh, things and my patients are happy because i can answer all their questions <laughs> Okay, that's great. So how does a dermatologist like you uh, take care of your skin? I have to follow a CTM routine. I mean, I advise everybody to do it because that's how uh, if you maintain a cleanser, toner, sunscreen routine every morning uh, and a cleanser, toner, a moisturizer routine every night, uh, your skin can look good. 
uh, of course uh, we, we get tanned because sometimes we are not able to reapply our sunscreen so I do a peel once in two three months to make my skin look clear and as we are aging we want to prevent uh, the fine lines open pores and wrinkles so a peel or a microdermabrasion skin polishing procedure helps to keep the skin looking fine but uh, using a night cream is very important and using the sunscreen in the day is very important these are the two things I would tell everyone to use and the night cream can be different depending upon your skin type your whether you want to use anti-aging whether you want to use anti-acne whether you want to use a lightening cream but uh, something to apply at night and something to apply in the day these two things when done they can maintain your skin looking good all the time so doctor does screen time affect your skin absolutely larissa that's a wonderful question because not everybody realizes that when they're sitting at home during the pandemic i didn't go out doctor why have i got pigmentation why have i got dark circles why is my uh, you know the melasma has got increased i was at home i didn't go in the sun at all so so the screen time, uh, every time you're using your phones, you're using your laptop, your tablets, even the computers, the ultraviolet light or the blue light from the screen is like ultraviolet light from the sun. And every day when we wear our clothes and our inner parts are protected, the sunscreen is like the clothes we wear on our face. And it forms a thin film to reflect light or to absorb light so that the skin stays protected. So it's very important to use a sunscreen even at home every three to four hours especially for the people who are on the computer who are watching tv who are having you know big lights at home sometimes we are like for shoots you have to put a sunscreen when you have lights coming on you uh, when you have a big tv screen now the latest is you know people want to buy the big screen at home and watch their favorite shows so the the more the light the more the damage so make sure you apply your sunscreen in front of your screens every time and re reapply them every three to four hours so doctor does alcohol uh, cause skin problems? Alcohol? Now that is a difficult question Larissa but uh, to understand the people who do a lot of alcohol or very often uh, finally when alcohol gets metabolized in your liver it's basically carbohydrate it gets converted to sugar and it gets stored in the body or it gets thrown out but because it's sugar it tends to dehydrate your skin tends to dehydrate your system so if somebody is drinking enough water and drinking alcohol the balance is there no problem however the ones who have alcohol but they're not drinking enough water they are the ones who land up with dry skin irritated skin sometimes itching and because of uh, too much of alcohol and the dehydration you can land up having uh, edema feet like the feet swell up you can have ascites in the stomach with a liver cell failure I mean a lot of organ damage can happen with alcohol on the skin it basically lands up to dehydration which can increase the pigmentation or increase the aging on the face so uh, with uh, alcohol you know some people we when we see the face we come to know oh that's how we ask the question we see their parotid glands enlarged because there's too much of alcohol going in or they're dehydrated and there's no other reason for getting the dehydration then we know that it's the alcohol which is causing it so basically it's the dehydration which is a problem with alcohol so doctor does acne affect your health acne is mainly coming on the face you can also have it on your chest on the back on the arms on the shoulders and uh, basically it creates a lot of mental health issues because people get conscious, they are very uh, conservative, they become shy, they social isolation because they feel everybody is looking at my acne and I don't like my face. So they go through uh, uh, self-esteem or confidence issues. So acne affects the mind firstly. Secondly, uh, with acne there also can be association of hormone problems. You can have polycystic ovarian syndrome, you can have metabolic syndrome, you can have uh, steroid side effects. So understand Understanding what is affected in the body, it's important to un, you know check, do a little checkup of the body to understand what else is accompanied with the acne, and therefore acne can be a problem. It's like the first sign your body is giving you to hide something that's also happening inside. Yeah. So you should do a sonography. You should check out, check your hormones, find out what is going on inside to make sure that your acne is also sorted. But at the same time, you pick up anything that's going on inside the body also so doctor how can you you know determine if a price tag i mean if a product is worth the price tag so there are a lot of products available right now over the counter from the doctors now instagram has started advertising so much for uh, products so uh, we get attracted seeing the ad but we must understand 
why are they giving ads because they want to sell their product so only if you understand if the content if it's niacinamide if it's retinol if it's uh, you know a lightening agent alpha hydroxy acid is it needed for your skin so we as doctors if the patient comes to us and asks us that i've bought this thing from the counter and i like this doctor i got very attracted to buy it is it good we can see the ingredient and we can guide you whether it's helpful or not but most of the time uh, they have a mix of Uh, products in everything like mix of ingredients and some of them work some of them don't work each person's skin type is different so one product doesn't work for all and that's why they need to come to us and just ask or at least take the guidance on what can help them what can not help them so uh, it would be difficult to say whether it's worth the price because sometimes the product is very reasonable but it works very well and sometimes the product is very expensive but it doesn't do anything at all so only when we see it or we uh, examine it we can tell you whether it's worth it or not so doctor are laser treatments safe laser is the best thing that has happened uh, in the latest uh, last 10 years i would say latest decade and uh, everybody who's done laser hair reduction uh, they've done fractional laser for their face to get their skin tightened they've done uh, fractional laser for their acne scars um, they've done q switch laser which is for brightening oh they work amazing however the important thing to understand is make sure you do it under the guidance of a doctor or a dermatologist or an or somebody who's trained in the laser machine do not do it with a practitioner or just the local you know just sometimes just the uh, staff is trying to do lasers without the doctors being around and that is when we have noticed burns happening pigmentation happening so many people say oh i don't want to do laser i get pigmentation i've heard it gives pigmentation it's not actually that if you do it at the right time with the right sessions with the right reading right guidance from the doctor lasers can do the best for you and make your skin very good make your hair go away but the people who have hormone issues the people who overdo the laser they can have problems so if done at the right time and the right guidance lasers are very good so doctor is it important you know to understand the connection between the skin and the mind that's a beautiful question larissa because Uh, especially now during the pandemic a uh, lot of mental health issues have come up and uh, we as doctors have realized that even the creams the tablets were not working or they work but then the problem keeps coming back and that is when i as uh, you know my need to help everyone my uh, doctor you know when you want to be the rescue or you want to be there for everyone i uh, understood the whole uh, mind and body connection so the brain and the skin develop at the same time in the fifth month of pregnancy when the fetus or the cells are born so uh, the ectoderm or the outer layer and the mesoderm the endoderm the ectoderm the outer layer produces the skin and the brain is produced at the same time from the same layer so whatever happens in the brain affects the skin and whatever happens in the skin can affect the brain so if somebody gets burnt or if somebody has an accident and they have a big scar it affects them so badly mentally because they are conscious they are scared they are like how will i face the world my husband will leave me my boyfriend will not be with me so all these things happen in the mind and the same time when somebody has a depression problem in the mind or they have psychiatric issues they tend to pick on their skin any little thing they they will be like you know affected and they will not let it be there on the skin creating damage they pull out their hair lot of trichotillomania is affected to the mind when the person is stressed they'll keep pulling out their hair and we wonder how come you lost hair over here it's not alopecia so we come to know the difference between uh, how a person is affected whether the mind is involved or it is a regular skin problem. problem so understanding the mind and skin problem is very important and if we all doctors counsel them uh, which i have been doing uh, it's worked very well for patients who have been visiting three four doctors they've not had uh, improvement in their skin or they improve but they keep getting the problem back and i would counsel them about why it's happening the metaphysical reason of the skin problem so if somebody has a lot of acne and it keeps coming back is there anger in their mind are they dealing with any guilt that is making them get up the acne the pus is more of anger and guilt uh, the fungal infections you should check if you have any resentments or regrets in your mind and when the awareness comes when they understand oh my nature needs to be changed i need to stop being like this automatically the healing starts and their infections also heal 
and they're gone for good. So during the pandemic, I was able to do a lot of uh, healing like this on the phone because we didn't have the patient in front of us. Yes. Online consultations were on and uh, they were amazed. They said, doctor, how did you know that I'm dealing with this issue? So it, it definitely there is a mind and body connection. And if understood well, you can uh, solve a lot of problems just by doing a good counseling and the patients can also do some uh, changes in their life like you know maybe do some affirmations positive thinking uh, journal work like I guide them on how to take care of their uh, mental strength and increase their confidence increase the positivity in their life and things just start changing everything starts moving around because their energy gets changed so it all starts from within it all starts from within and we also we have a physical body but we also have an energetic body and that energetic body picks up energy you know how we go to somewhere and we feel this place is not nice I don't the like this vibes, place yes. or I don't like this person the vibes so that vibe needs to be changed and everything starts the mind is the master if you change the mind things can turn around and you can be much more happier okay. so doctor what are some myths that you've come across regarding skin um, I think the biggest myth is like uh, people nowadays with the trend going on on Instagram, we see these products, oh, retinol is very good for skin. Oh, uh, these uh, serums, you have to apply a serum on the face. And many patients come and say, doctor, do I need to put a serum? Doctor, do I need to do this? Do I? And we're like, who told you to use all this? You don't need it. So uh, the biggest myth is you don't need to use a serum unless you need it. If you have oily skin, you use light water-based products. You don't need to thop things. Like you don't need a moisturizer on your face if you have oily skin. The people with dry skin can of course apply their creams more regularly but the ones with oily skin the least applied the least chemicals used can help your skin to look good and the main thing is changing your diet you know having a good sleep your lifestyle has to be important uh, doing a little exercising every day and everything will just turn around but of course when they have some problem they can come to us we can guide them and give them the right products once the problem is sorted you're free again so what are some basic skincare routine that can be, you know, uh, useful to maintain like a healthy skin? So the first thing I would advise is good use a good cleanser. We want to avoid soap on the face because soap can, it has a lot of alkali and it can actually dry the skin. And we might not realize it now because when you dry the skin on top and you feel good, the body produces more oil thinking, oh, the skin is dry. So the involuntary mechanism or the you know, the skin takes care of itself by producing natural lipids. And if this barrier is taken off, then you start producing more oil. And then you don't understand why am I getting this and you keep washing your face. The more you wash, the more dehydration, the more open pores, the more fine lines and the more pigmentation because your skin is open and it can get sunlight, pollution, dust, dirt, everything goes in much more easily. However, if you're protected with your sunscreen, you have your night cream every night to take care of the damage that has been done in the day. Skin starts looking more clearer, there's glow, you have protection from damage. So overall, using a cleanser to wash your face, using a sunscreen in the day, using a night cream at night, depending upon your night cream could be an anti-aging, a lightening night cream, somebody with acne has an acne, anti-acne cream. Depending upon your need, just a dry skin can do only good with a moisturizer. Depending upon your need, we give you a night cream to use and wash your face two, three times a day, drink lots of water, eat well, lot of salads and fruits and you're sorted, your skin will look good. So doctor, uh, just like how we apply sunscreen to our skin, you know, to protect it, how can we protect our hair from sun and the other? So uh, sunscreen on the face, of course, does a good protection to, like we already discussed, it protects the face. I want to share uh, this point that you've made. Let me share how to put the sunscreen because many times we apply a sunscreen, but we wonder it's not working on me. I, I still got tanned. I went to Goa and I still got tanned, doctor. People say that. So the best way to apply a sunscreen is not like a moisturizer. This is how you apply a sunscreen. You take a little bit on your hand, put little, little dots, Make sure you have evenly spaced dots and then with that one or two fingers just join the dots and form a thin film to protect the skin not to massage and not to let it soak in. So the more you leave it like a film it stays for that two to three hours or the five hours that we spoke about. It forms a film to reflect the light and it also uh, the more hand that you use to apply the sunscreen the more 
cream gets absorbed in the palms and less goes over here it, it gets divided so you might think I applied so much sunscreen but it's not you know uh, it's, it didn't work because half the cream was here and half the cream was on your face so make sure you apply a thin layer make sure you use less fingers to apply it make sure you leave it like a film and apply 15 to 20 minutes before because it takes that time to set and then when you go out you won't sweat but if you apply it and immediately run out, that action of rubbing also makes you sweat. You know, when you're ready to leave, uh, the hormones release a little sweat from the body and then the sunscreen is all gone. melted and yes. gone. So uh, when you apply a sunscreen for the face and it protects you, for the hair, I would suggest that sometimes we know we get these uh, hydrating serums for the lower hair. So these can be a protective layer on the outer hair roots not to make them dry. Uh, because when we are exposed to the sun, we are going to the beach, we are going, we are playing sports or we are going in the s water to swim. Yes. Uh, the hair needs to be protected with a coating of either coconut oil, simple light oils that you can use or a hydrating serum so that the penetration of the chloride or the penetration of the sun is prevented by that layer. And then when you wash your hair, make sure you use a conditioner well and take care of your hair. But just oil and a um, hydrating serum should do the protection from the sun and from the chlorine. Uh, many people have seen, you know, colored hair. They are out in the sun and their hair becomes lighter. They say, doctor has got more bleach. The color has changed. So that is a big problem for many people. But when they've used oils and hydrating serums, uh, they found an improvement and the hair doesn't look so bad. <laughs> How often should one see a dermatologist? Uh, every time there is a change of season, uh, especially in India, every three months the season changes. Uh, we recommend you to come back in three months to change your products because due, due to the season change, the products need to change. If in the winter you use something hydrating, but in the summer you need something light. In the rainy season, you need something absolutely no chip chip, you know. So the products need to be changed every three months. However, the people who have a problem, they have... Uh, problems on their skin with eczemas, their acne and whatever. Every month a follow-up is needed to make sure we check the progress. We want to change any creams, we want to add any tablets, we want to add something to make your skin. As we are growing older, we are, our faces are changing. So every month, every two months is good to visit a doctor and to uh, confirm what is the best needed for your skin. So doctor, now we have a few queries from, from our viewers. Lovely. We'd like you to answer. Sure, sure. Yeah, so the first one is, what can I be doing to protect my skin from pimples and acne? So, uh, I would say acne and pimples, the reasons are five. One is when you drink less water. One is if you are not eating salads and fruits, that's vitamin A, E, C deficiency. Uh, if it's heredity, if there's hormone changes or any polycystic ovaries. Uh, and the last one is uh, pollution and stress. So out of these five, if you understand what your problem is or what you're dealing with, if you can correct it, the acne and the pimples will stop. However, the ones who don't understand, they say, I'm eating well, I'm sleeping on time, I'm doing everything properly, but still I'm breaking out. So we run a little battery of tests. We understand their blood work. You know, we check their hormones. We check their deficiencies. Most of the time, nutritional deficiencies are also common. And even after that, if nothing is found, like I said, uh, the mind needs counseling. Where is the acne coming? from so when I do all three and we find out what the reason is the acne gets controlled and the patients are happy okay so the next one is are there any new technologies or procedures for skin maintenance the latest uh, technologies that have come about are many uh, micro needling radio frequency is one beautiful machine which can rejuvenate your skin help your pores and uh, scars to get tighter it can actually lift up the face and make you look uh, do anti-aging mm -hmm. And then uh, it, it also can work on, you know, giving you a glow. So uh, microneedling radio frequency is the latest that I have been using. A uh, lot of different lasers have come out, pixel lasers, pico lasers, and uh, the Q-switch lasers. These help to make your skin look brighter. The color improves, the spots or the pigmentation can get lighter. And then you have the fractional laser, which helps for lightening, tightening, and it works on your acne scars and open pores. So these three lasers are the best for the latest technologies. And uh, also there is something called as HIFU, which is high intensity focused ultrasound, which helps to create a lift for the heavy face people. Like many people have a lot of heavy faces and it's like there's so much sagging that it needs to be pulled up. So HIFU, thomas, there's a lot of new technologies which are available. Depending upon the need, we guide them on 
what they should do and of course plastic surgery you know there's a lot of advance there too so there's uh, threads and we can do fillers we can do botox to lift the eyebrows so there's a lot of uh, invasive things which we can do also if patients are ready for injections or they're ready for the threads or they're ready for the machines depending upon what they're okay with sometimes it's also a budget issue like how much they want to spend and sometimes it's also the need i have a wedding in a month and in a month i can't let the machine do the job because the job takes time for the machine to work so then you would do an injection where it's a botox or a filler or you would do threads but if it's you have three months in hand you have six months in hand then we can work with the machine and do a few sessions every month and the results are fantastic because you create an overall lift of the skin so all these new things are available depending upon what they need uh, we can guide them and of course the new thing that I do is the counseling and understanding where the mind is connected so that's new for me and I uh, I'm enjoying doing it because everybody is so happy with what they learn and they say doc how did you know this so it's a nice uh, feeling that you get because you can help them in every way it seems like a great initiative yes. so does these uh, you know uh, these uh, technologies that you just told us about does these have any uh, side effects so uh, every technology has a uh, there's nothing permanent no everything is temporary yes. so uh, the side effect is not much if done at the right doctor and the right clinic but the uh, problem is that it doesn't last so you have to do maintenance everything needs maintenance even a relationship now needs maintenance Larissa <laughs> we have to do keep th doing things to make people happy so the same way your skin needs maintenance your hair needs maintenance you know we do a spa we do things to the hair same way if you continue doing your treatments regularly your skin can look good and remain good and uh, there are no actual side effects if it is done by somebody who's not trained then there can be something wrong but majorly nothing either it works or it doesn't work but nothing can actually go wrong if done with the dermatologist so the next one is how many times should I wash my face to treat acne uh, because the skin produces its natural oils I would say do not overdo your face uh, morning afternoon night three times a day is the best for everyone the dry skin people can wash twice, just morning and night. And the oily skin people can do morning, afternoon, evening, night, just four times. Mm -hmm. But more than that, you're unnecessarily stripping the skin off and it's not worth it. So two to three times is the best. The last one is what SPF sunscreen should one use keeping in mind the weather of our state? Yes, so uh, considering the humidity, the sun and uh, you know we have to travel, we, we travel on the bike, we go on in the uh, public transports and we travel by car. Even through the car windows, sunlight is able to get in from the front, from the sides. So uh, using an SPF of 30 for people who have short drives or short exposure, but if you're sitting in an office with big lights, white lights and you have a screen in front of you an SPF of 50 is the best uh, higher SPFs like 60 70 100 we don't recommend too much because they become more oilier and more thicker so only if you are uh, you know working on a uh, there are people who are working in uh, like higher altitudes yes. then they need high, higher SPF of 60 70 and even 100 but in our states in our cities uh, 30 to 50 is good and the main thing is to reapply every three to four hours and make sure you do not rub the sunscreen, put little, little dots, apply it like a thin film and it will show its best results. Thank you so much, doctor. Pleasure. Thank you, doctor, for making time and coming to our studio today. Pleasure. It was great having you. Thank you so much. So on that note, we come to an end of today's episode. See you all next week with yet another specialist only on Prime TV.